All right, grade 11s, um, here is your next um, slide. We are working now with something called an identity. We briefly spoke about identities at the beginning when we spoke about tan is a sign of a cos. Um, just also note, so we know tan is sign of a cos, or sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. There are variations. If you invert tan, so flip it, you can also flip the fraction for sine and cos, and you can also rearrange the identity, the square's identity, um, like we did in the previous videos. All right, so now when we're talking about proving identities, so proving identities is a little bit different. Um, you'll be given a question where they'll say, prove that, and they'll give you something, and they'll say equals to something else. So you are working with, you've got to get the left-hand side to look like the right-hand side or the right-hand side to look like the left-hand side. So the first thing you're going to be doing is splitting your left and right. I will show you in an example, but just in your mind, have it there, split left and right. Then you're going to start with a more complicated side, and this is probably the most important thing. Do not interact the two sides until the end, and I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, there is going to be a lot of algebra in here. So things like finding LCDs, simplifying fractions, like algebra, factorizing, there's trinomials, there's dots, there's highest common factor. You've got to find those things now within the trig. Okay, um, the only time you're going to be doing this type is when they say use, uh, well, not necessarily, they won't say use, but we'll use the left and right for when they say prove, not simplify. So if they say simplify, then you're not using the left and right. But if they say prove or show that, then you're going to use this left-hand side, right-hand side. Okay, let's get right into it. These are your textbook examples. They are in the textbook. If you have a look in the textbook, um, just after we've worked with the reductions and negative angles, um, so just after exercise 5, they've got these. All right, so again, just... Um, emphasizing when proving identities we always work with the two sides separately our goal is to show that the two sides are equal to the same expression it's usually easiest to work with sine and cos only so you have this handy little thing of tan can be split into sine over cos also don't forget you can use your squares identity and use a one all right, so going straight into it, example 14 from the textbook, I'm just going to walk you through it, is it says prove that. So then when you see something like that, you use a left-hand side versus right-hand side. And it says prove that cos times tan plus sine can equal to sine theta. So I can't use that. I'm trying to show that the answer is that. So it's just them being nice saying what it's actually going to end up being. They're giving you the answer. So you can almost check yourself. So your right-hand side is going to stay 2 sine theta. There's nothing else you can do with it. Please, you cannot drag that 2 sine theta across the equal sign. It's not an equation. Okay, in an equation, you can move things over the equal sign. Here, you effectively ignore the fact that that side even exists until you get down to that answer. So again, I'll show you what I mean. When we're working with the left-hand side, okay, so I'm going to say left-hand side equals. I can change the tan to a sine over cos. So now I end up, this step is cos theta over 1 times sine theta over cos. That piece is together, and then I'm adding a sine theta. So the coses can cancel. And that's where I'm left with just a sine theta plus a sine theta, which gets me two sine thetas. And hey, your brain should say, hang on, that now equals the right hand side. So that's all we're trying to do is get the left to look like the right. You're manipulating to get the two sides looking the same. All right. Then for question B, question B says sine times cos times tan plus cos squared x must equal to 1. So I'm clearly going to be working with the left-hand side because it is the more complicated side. 
And so when we're working with the left hand side, I can change tan to sine over cos. That's an easy mark for you. But then our coses can cancel when we multiply top to bottom. Remember, that's all over one. Then I will have my sine times my sine gets my sine squared. And then bring the cos squared down. Sine squared plus cos squared equals one. And my right hand side is one. So you conclude then that my left hand side equals my right hand side. So it's simplifying one of the sides completely, but they've already given you the answer. Whereas in the previous simplifying questions, you don't have the answer. Here, they've given it to you. You know where you're heading for. You know what you've got to get it to look like. It's just about getting it there. Um, and again, just a reminder that you have sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, but you can manipulate it. So if you have a sine squared, you can replace it with a 1 minus cos squared. Or vice versa, cos squared, you can replace it with a 1 minus sine squared. All right, so it's just using all the stuff that I've already taught you now and just bringing it all together. Okay, so then example 15 from the textbook is, again, approve that. So we're going to split it into a left-hand side. Traditionally, the left-hand side is the more complicated side. It's not always, though, so just watch out for it. So when we're working with the left-hand side here, sine squared over 1 minus cos squared. So look at your right-hand side. Your right-hand side needs causes only. There's no signs there. So we want to try to get rid of the sign, try and figure out how to get rid of it. Now, what I just said, remember, sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of an angle equals 1. But where I see a sine squared, I can take that cos squared over and replace it. So that's what's happened here. The sine squared has been replaced with a 1 minus cos squared. Now I've only got coses and, yes, numbers, but I do need a number in the question. Here comes the algebra. So the algebra now, I've got to watch out. This top piece, that 1 minus 2, uh, sorry, 1 minus cos squared alpha is actually a dot. Because you've got a 1, perfect square, minus difference, cos squared, another perfect square, so there's a difference of two squares. So it would be the same as if you had 1 minus x squared. You would have 1 minus x, 1 plus x. So it's a dots. Okay, and so with the dots, then we can, let's just get rid of that. We can cancel the binomials that look identical. You can't take pieces of them, but you can cancel entire binomials. And we left with just the 1 plus cos alpha, which happens to look like the right-hand side. So there you've proved that you can make the left look like the right without bringing anything over. It's not an equation. It's more like they've given you the answer. It's like the memo. You've just got to show how to get to that answer. Okay, looking at now B. B is this one there. Okay, so sine squared plus 2 sine theta plus 1 over cos squared theta equals 1 plus sine theta over 1 minus sine theta. So both look quite complicated, but the left looks the most complicated. Oh, sorry. So we are going to work with the left-hand side again. Okay, so my top bit here is actually now, and so this is where it gets a bit tough. You've got to imagine this stuff. This is a trinomial. So it's actually, imagine it's x squared plus 2x plus 1. It would be x plus 1, x plus 1. But instead of x's, we've got sine thetas. So it's actually sine theta plus 1, sine theta plus 1. So now you say, how on earth am I going to recognize that? Remember, you've got a sine squared, you've got a sine, and you've got a number. Three different categories. Squared, regular, constant. All right, so we can factorize it. This happens to be the same bracket multiplied, so it's actually sine theta plus 1 all squared. Um, which I'd be totally okay with you writing it out instead of the squared. Let's just do something here. Right, 
So extend this line and you can actually have sine theta plus one. And then you see it a bit nicer there. So sine theta plus one. Let's get rid of all that. Okay, so in rough you can replace it with x's and just imagine it. Um, all right, so then at the bottom again, this is a very common thing that they work with, is a dots. Okay, dots comes up a lot because of the squared identity relationship. So that becomes 1 minus sine theta, 1 plus sine theta. So even though the order is different, that sine theta plus 1 and that sine theta plus 1 is the same. Because remember, positives, it doesn't matter the order. And then you are left with sine theta plus 1 and the sine theta minus 1. Um, and your right-hand side actually is 1 plus sine theta, but that's the same thing because both are positive. So left-hand side equals right-hand side. So unfortunately here, um, in this question, there is not a single... Um, well, actually, there's one tiny little bit of algebra, of trig. It's changing that cos to that 1 minus sine. How did I know I needed to do that? Because I need a sine on my right-hand side for my denominator. That's the only way. I don't have any coses on the right-hand side, so try and get rid of all the coses on the left-hand side. Every single other thing in this question is algebra. That's why we focus so much on algebra at the beginning of the year. Okay, example 16, the addition and subtraction of fractions. Now, just remember, when you're working with addition and subtraction of fractions, LCDs are involved. So, for this first question, example 16, prove that, we've got to prove that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, but the left-hand side has a fraction added to a fraction. So, we need to find an LCD. And the LCD happens to be both denominators of the fractions. So the first fraction has 1 minus sine theta. So I've got to make sure I give it 1 plus sine theta. That's where that came from. Or sine theta plus 1. It doesn't matter. Um, let's just go back. I'm just going to do this separately because they haven't shown the step. So here... So we've got 1 over 1 minus sine theta. So I'm going to multiply this by 1 plus sine theta to give it the LCD. And then this one has a 1 minus sine theta being attached to it, giving each thing the LCD. So that means 1 goes in, multiplied in. So we're left with the 1 plus sine theta over here. Sorry, 1 plus sine theta. And then when we multiply into the other side, we're left with 1 minus sine theta. Our two 1s add together to make 2. And then my sine theta and my sine theta cancel. So it's sine theta minus sine theta. It's like x minus x. And then at the bottom, my LCD needs to be adapted a little bit. How do I know it needs to be adapted? Because I've only got... Um, let's just change the color here. I've only got signs at the moment in my LCD, but on the right-hand side, I need a cos. So how do I get a cos from a sign? I can distribute, so I've distributed this LCD, and it makes a dot, 1 minus sine squared alpha, sorry, theta, that can change to a cos squared theta. Because remember, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So if I have a 1 minus sine squared theta, okay, it means I've taken it over. I'm left with a cos squared theta. And that is my right-hand side. Okay, so it's, it's a bit tricky, this section, but it's just about manipulation, algebra, a lot of algebra, and also using the right-hand side to picture where you need to go. If you've got signs, on the right hand side, try and get signs on the left. If you've got causes on the left hand side and causes on the right hand side, then you're fine. You try and figure out what's needed by looking at both sides, but only working with one side at a time. All right, question B. So my left hand side is given as this and my right hand side as that. So I'll talk about why we're working with both here, but I'll get back to that. So on my left-hand side, 
my favorite thing to work with is a tan because straight away a tan is a sine over cos so if i have a tan squared i can make it sine squared over cos squared now again just some algebra here this is one term all right so when you're working with it this actually and again they've skipped another step here sine squared x plus this becomes sine to the power of 4x because when you take a squared times a squared and that's over cos squared x so you have sine squared over 1 sine to the 4x over cos squared it's a fraction plus a fraction we find an lcd once you find an lcd of cos squared then you apply it top and bottom to the first fraction and so we get sine squared times cos squared right then here's some algebra going on we're going to take out a common sine squared and we're left with a cos squared plus a sine squared which is one right so sine squared times one is just sine squared and then sine squared over cos squared is actually equal to tan squared which is your right hand side now they decided to at the same time think ahead on your right hand side and change it to sine squared over cos squared you're allowed to work with both sides but you just can't mix them so even if you draw a line going down or you imagine that there's a barrier you can't mix the sides but you're welcome to manipulate both sides to help you in this case you didn't really have to but um, it could help for those of you who just know tan is sine over cos. Okay, so if you battled to see this, you could have imagined this as x squared, y squared, plus x to the 4. And you could have taken out an x squared, you'd be left with y squared, but plus x squared. And that's what that step is. Okay, so do it in rough, do it in your head. Please just don't do it in the question. It's not strictly algebraic sections. It's trig, but we're using algebraic methods. Okay, so now for example 17. Um, it just gets a little bit busier, a lot more algebra. Same idea though. So we're working with um, left-hand side, right-hand side, because the question says prove that. Um it's up to you here. They've worked with both left-hand side and right-hand side at the same time. You can kind of get through your left-hand side, and if you get a bit stuck, you can then go to your right-hand side. It's up to you. Um, but my advice is always just start with the more complicated side, which in this case, there's a lot more to your left-hand side. So, first of all, tan is sine over cos. So you can use both sets there of tan. And then it just um, works with the idea of tipping and timesing now. So this first fraction, we are dividing by sine. So it's actually sine over 1. So when we tip and times, it becomes 1 over sine. My sines cancel, and I'm left with 1 over cos. Then the second fraction is dividing by sine over cos when we tip in times it's cos over sine the sines cancel and i'm left with one times by negative cos which is just negative cos then we have a fraction subtracting a fraction so we find an lcd of cos theta and so the first fraction has it the second fraction doesn't so we're going to give the lcd to the second fraction and that's where we get the 1 minus cos squared. But remember, 1 minus cos squared can become a sine squared. Why would I want a sine squared? Because on the right-hand side, there was a sine involved there. So I'll get a sine squared. So then a sine squared over a cos squared, you might think, hang on, I'm not getting anywhere with that. So you might decide you're actually going to flip to the right-hand side over there. And once you're on the right-hand side, you'll see that tan is sine over cos, sine over 1, sine times sine. Because remember, when you're multiplying fractions, you do top by top, bottom by bottom. So here, this is sine over cos times by sine over 1. So it's sine by sine is sine squared, cos by 1 is cos, which then shows that you can get your left-hand side 
sorry, your left hand side to equal your right hand side. So again, you're allowed to manipulate both sides. You just can't bring things from the right over to the left and vice versa. You've okay. got to keep the left separate to the right. But if you can get both sides down to the same thing, then that's the aim of the question. Right then, so for question B now, again, just a lot of algebra happening here. So we're going to start with the left-hand side. And the reason I'm starting with the left-hand side is I like the side that has a tan because it's an easy fix to get, sine over cos. Then the better thing to do is you've got quite a big piece top and bottom. So it's just better to rewrite it instead of as a fraction, rather rewrite it as a, a division. Then what we've done is before we start mixing the brackets, let's do bod mass first. So remember, bod mass says rather do the brackets first. So within the bracket, we've got one plus a fraction. So we can find an LCD of cos A in that first bracket. So it becomes cos A plus sine A. And then um, in the second bracket, we've again got a fraction involved, a 1 minus the fraction. So we're going to find an LCD also of cos A, but it's going to be slightly different. So then once we've sorted out our brackets, and please, please, please do not do this. Don't cancel your causes. Because remember, you've got a binomial at the top. So leave it alone. You need to work out something else to do. So then, because of the division here of a fraction. So remember, when we divide by a fraction, we tip in times the second fraction. And then what happens is we can cancel our causes at the bottom, top to bottom. And then we're left with cos A plus sine A over cos A minus sine A. You cannot cancel pieces of it. Unless a binomial looks identical, you cannot cancel it. Right, so we're left with both binomials as is, which just happens to be our right-hand side. So your aim here is just to get it to look like the right-hand side. Manipulate until you get it there. All right, then for example, 18, it's a slightly more advanced identity. Again, we're working with left-hand side, right-hand side, because of the question says prove that. Now, for this first one, both sides look pretty complicated, but this left-hand side has a little bit more going on. Okay, the right-hand side, again, you can't cancel, but maybe you're going to have the same effect as example 17b. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side. Right, that piece, that top piece is a very common dot to work with. It's the same as saying x squared minus y squared, two unknowns. So become x minus y, x plus y. But instead of x's and y's, we have sines and cos's. So from this point onwards now, we need to try and fix that bottom piece. Because the bottom piece on the right-hand side does not have any numbers. It also doesn't have any signs and causes being multiplied. So we somehow have to get rid of that one. Now the only way you've learned to get rid of a one is to replace it with that identity sine squared plus cos squared. So instead of that one, I want to put a sine squared plus cos squared. Then in the next step, all that's happened is, so, so let's just follow through. The yellow is staying the same. Right, our dots. Okay, so our dots is the yellow bit in the numerator. It's the denominator that I've got to focus on. So the denominator is going to be in light and dark blue. So this piece, oh, sorry, this piece now of the denominator, right, actually needs to become a middle term of a trinomial with our cos squared and our sine squared. Again, you might want to work with x's and y's. So instead of that, I could have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. That is a complicated trinomial, but it's x's and y's, and it ends up being minus and minus. So if I were to fall it out, it would become x squared minus xy minus another xy would get me negative 2xy 
plus a y squared. So remember, instead of x's and y's, I'm working with sines and cos's. So again, they're like jumping steps here. Right? So it's an identical bracket. This bracket can cancel because it's identical binomials. And then we're left with our right-hand side. Okay, so there is some complicated trinomial algebra in the trig. Um, it's hard to start seeing it to begin with. But as you practice a lot of examples, then um, you do start to see the trinomials and the factorizing. And it's almost like you get to know the types. There's only so many types, um, it, they can't really change it up too much. All right, for this next one, it is a really, really, really nasty one. Like, really bad. Okay, you'll get very, very, very few of these if you'll even get them. But it's just something handy to be able to know that you are allowed to manipulate like this. So in this one, it says, neither factorization... And all basic identities can be applied here. So in your brain, you're thinking, what the hell are we going to do? It will also not help to change 1 to sine squared plus cos squared. This will only complicate matters. In this case, we multiply the left-hand side by 1 in a special way. Now, in most cases, like I said, you are not going to get ones like this. But in the event that you do, you are... Or even if you don't get one specifically like this, but you see in a different question, even an easier one, that you can manipulate like this, you're more than welcome to. So the left-hand side, what they've done here is they've kept that fraction there. But in order to get rid of, or to sort this out, should I say, they have multiplied by 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. Because when you have the same thing top and bottom, you're actually multiplying by 1. So you, you're not changing anything here. The reason for that is they're recognizing that they need to get this 1 minus sine squared to get a cos squared, which somehow is going to get us a cos on the right-hand side. Now, again, at the bottom, when we multiply the bottom, the denominators here, we get cos into 1 minus sine squared. So then we can cancel that one cos with one of the squares, and then we get the right-hand side. It is a pretty, pretty tough one. This one's a mean one. So don't stress if this is sort of the one that you are not getting. This is like the superstar ones. It's like probably ones you'd have like triple stars on in your exercise. Okay, so it is pretty tough. Um, but if you can get 95% of the others, actually like 99% of the others are just basic trig and then a lot of algebra happening, this is a real one that, um, that's really to differentiate those um, sort of out-of-the-box thinkers from everyone else that just knows their theory. But trig mainly is theory-based, so you'll be fine with 99% of the questions. Okay, so I don't like this one, but it's something you have to see. All right, but let's move on to something that's actually a little bit nicer for your brains. All right, so this is just mixing in the reductions now. And um, this is just, the first few are just simplifying, and then I'll bring the reductions in. So for example, 19, um, Let's just cover the reductions again. So remember, sine of 90 plus is going to get you cos. Tan of 180 minus is in sine's quadrant. So you got to, you really have to know your cos diagram. So theta 180 minus theta is sine's quadrant. 180 plus is tan's quadrant. 360 minus is cos's quadrant. 90, 0. All right. So, because it's in sine quadrant, we get negative 10. And then 720, you can subtract two lots of 360, and you get to just sine theta. Um, then it's just this negative times the positive cos. The negative just jumps to the front. And then we're changing our 10 to a sine of a cos. So then our signs, the sign will stay, the causes will cancel, and then we're left with negative sign of a sign, which is negative 1. Right, for B, same story, just some revision here. 
we have sine of a negative angle is negative sine of that angle. Cos of 90 plus is the exception. It gets you negative sine of that angle. And then we have cos 180 plus is negative cos. And then cos of a negative angle is not affected. Just be careful. Negative times negative gets you positive sine squared. Negative times negative here gets you positive. And then cos times cos is cos squared. Sine squared plus cos squared ends up getting 1. All right. Next one, um, tan 225. If you look where is 225, it is in tan's quadrant. So it's 180 plus 45. Tan is positive, though, in its quadrant. Sine of 180 plus in tan's quadrant is negative sine. Cos of 90 minus gets you positive sine. Then, again, you're working with a negative 360. Just add 360 onto it. It cancels, and you're left with just cos theta. So then, at the top, tan 45 is a special angle. And it's equal to 1. And your blue and your yellow brackets combine to make your sine squared. And it becomes negative because of that negative there. All right. Let's just use a pen. Right. Then 1 minus sine squared is equal to cos squared, your identity. Cos squared over cos, remember, is like x squared over x. Cancel the bottom with one of the top and you're just left with cos squared. Now this could be an identity, a left hand side, right hand side, where you um, had to prove that it equals cos theta. So that's where we're heading with this. All right, um, just some more simplifying here. Tan of 90 minus. So now when you're working with tan of 90 minus, there's no rule of tan of 90 minus, so you change it to sine over cos of that angle. Right, so sine 90 minus becomes cos. Cos 90 minus becomes sine. Sine of a negative angle becomes negative sine of that angle. And cos of 180 plus is in tan's quadrant, so it becomes negative cos. Okay, at the top, this is actually... Cos theta over sine theta times bar negative sine theta over 1. So if it's a whole number, it's still over 1. My sines can cancel. Negative times cos is by negative cos over negative cos, which is positive 1. Okay, so this is just bringing everything together. Um, then more identities here when we're working with Numbers, it says calculate without the use of a calculator. So tan of 193, 193 is bigger than 300, sorry, bigger than 90, so it still fits on our cost diagram. So we have 180 minus 180 plus, oops, there's 180, there's 90, 0, or 360. 270 theta 360 minus theta so it's handy just to keep writing it down so 193 sits between 180 and 270 so it's in tan's quadrant it's 180 plus 13 all right it's positive because it's tan's quadrant all right then cos of a negative angle you remember for negative angles you pretend you're in cos's quadrant so it's just cos of 13 we'll follow that through then Cos of 103, 103 sits in sine's quadrant, so it's 180 minus 77. But now I'm seeing that it should be negative 77. I'm hoping that you see now the whole thing is going to change. Negative 77. Then Sine of 330 is in Cos's quadrant, 360 minus, let's just look a different color, 360 minus 30, but it's in Cos's quadrant, so sine is negative. So at the bottom here, we actually should get rid of this negative. All right. 
So then, because we've got special angles, the sine 30 is a special angle, so we can replace it. It would be negative, um, but there is a missing negative here, so negative and negative make positive. So the denominator should be positive. And so then you have sine 13 over cos 13 for 10. And the reason we're going with that is let's try and get rid of some of the non-special angles. So at the top, the cos and the cos will actually cancel out. And you'll be left with sine 13 over, again, that should be positive. Right? And why the cos 77 is changed to 13 is because, remember, our co-ratios, cos and sine, if the numbers add up to 90, then they are equivalent. So instead of a cos 77, I can make it a sine 13. Or you could have changed the sine 13 at the top to a cos 77 and cancelled it. The idea is, though, you're going to cancel and you're left with 1 divided by a half, which is positive 2, not negative 2. All right, um, moving on now to the next one. Let's hope there are no mistakes here. So when we're working with uh, 10 of 135, 135 is in sines quadrant. So again, we're working with 180 minus 45, but it's negative because it's 10. 10 of 45 is 1, so that becomes negative 1. Then, cos of 320, 320 is in cos's quadrant, so it's 360 minus 40, but the cos doesn't change. Then, we're working with cos 140, cos is in, 140 is in sine's quadrant, between 90 and 180, so we are going to have 180 minus 40, but it's negative cos. Alright, then we have sine 220. 220 is sitting in tan's quadrant between 180 and 270. It's 180 plus 40, but because it's in tan's quadrant, it's negative sine 40. Right, then cos of a negative angle is just cos of that angle. Right, and then just this step here. Negative times negative becomes positive. Cos 40 times cos 40 becomes cos squared 40. Um, now, one, negative 1 plus cos squared 40 is kind of close to 1 minus cos squared 40. But in order to get it to look like that, we need to take out a negative. All right, so we take out a negative. That 1 minus cos squared 40 can become a sine squared 40. The negative here and the negative at the bottom can cancel. And then our, the, remember, sine squared 40 over sine 40. So sine squared 40 is the same as multiplying two lots of sine 40. Oops, sorry. Cos 50. 40s can cancel there and we're left with sine 40 over cos 50. Now, 50 and 40 make 90, so we can change cos 50, and it's a 5, cos 50 to a sine 40. And then you can cancel them, top and bottom, and you're left with a 1. So, sometimes the textbook leaves out a couple of steps. Please put as many steps in as you need. All right. And then... Um, that is it for the different types of identities. So it's just about now practicing a whole lot of them. So there's exercise six. And I'm just going to highlight some numbers for you. Um, and then over the weekend, I'll put up maybe just another type of Pythag question that comes with just using the, the new work with the Pythag type questions. And then we just have solving equations. And that's it for the trig. Um, and then when we get back to school, we will work on trig functions at some point and functions in general, parabolas, etc., and some geometry. Um, so this is the trig work is just for this lockdown time. All right, so I'll highlight some questions now for you.
Okay, so um, I've just highlighted some of them. Again, the more you do, the better. Just to help you out with question eight, this is a binomial being squared. So you should FOIL it, but first do your bod mass. Maybe you can sort out the inside of the bracket so that you don't have a binomial anymore. Change the tan to a sign of a cos. Get it LCD, maybe it will work out a little bit quicker for you. Okay, so don't overcomplicate your life there. Do bod mass brackets first, then start bringing in squares. So try and simplify that bracket a little bit first. Okay, the more you practice, the better. And there carries Evans. Um, question C of the textbook exercise six is very complicated. That's where you got the stars here. So these are the very challenging ones. If you're not so confident yet, you're a little bit confused, you're not happy with doing this by yourself, then leave it, come back to it at a later point. But if you're feeling like you're getting this trick stuff, then go for it, challenge yourself. I will put memos up over the weekend for this, um, but you can check from the back of the book as well. And then there's exercise. All right, so you can pretty much do quite a lot of exercise seven, if not all of it. Um, the more you practice of this, you're getting your reductions in, your co-ratios, your negative angles, your tan is sign of a cos, you're doing some factorizing, you're doing some canceling. It really does help. So this one's quite a handy one. Um, and just the last note is for question B, they do say without a calculator. Remember, that's just a hint to use co-ratios, special angles, canceling. Um, yeah, it's just helping you realize that it's, it's simpler things. Okay, so look for the simpler things within the complicated. Good luck, grade 11s.